All right, everybody, welcome to part three. Rob Cohe here again. Um, we're going to pick up where we left off uh, from part two. Just as a reminder, this is the assembly that we're working on, and we're still working on the middle part, uh, the housing. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to cut off a, a little bit of a relief at the bottom of this. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to start a new sketch on the front face. So you just pick the front face, right click, and choose new sketch. So as I was talking about in the previous um, uh, example, there's a number of different ways to access commands. So here I right clicked and I chose project. Project geometry is your best friend when it comes to sketching. Um, you'll absolutely lose, use it probably more than the line command, right? So what I've done is I've uh, projected some geometry. You saw that I turned off the visibility of the bodies um, and turned on the visibility of the sketch because really what I wanted was to project the sketch lines from sketch one into sketch two so I could use that geometry to give this little relief cut here that I'm doing. So I used the extrude command, dragged it in the opposite direction. You saw that the operation automatically uh, moved to a cut. I type in the dimension and I've removed some material from the front side of this. Next, I'm going to do a place feature called a fillet. So a fillet just going to round off the corner here. And as you can see, I can either type in the value or I can drag that arrow um, to the size that I want. Okay, so I've got two features and I want to do the same thing again. Um, so I'm going to use the mirror command. Use the mirror as often as possible. Um, here, I'll change the mirror type to mirror features. I'll choose an origin plane because remember, I, I extruded from mid plane. Um, use the origin plane to uh, to uh, to move those features to the back side, and I just saved myself a lot of time, right? Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do some relief cuts um, from the top down onto this foot for the uh, mounting holes. Uh, if we're going to mount this to uh, uh, to something, and I'm going to create a uh, a work plane. Um, and there's a number of different types of work planes as you saw on that list, but I'm just going to do an offset work plane. And the, uh, the sequence is pick the plane that you want to be parallel to and then either determine a, dense, a distance or use a piece of geometry as a reference. Once I have that work plane created, I'll start a new sketch on it. And as you can see, I'm sketching through the middle of the body here and over on the sketch palette, a really nice option here that's that, that, um, that not, not a lot of people find uh, without being shown is the slice option so that I can cut away all the material on my view and get down to the sketch plane that I'm sketching. All right. So again, right away, I'm, I'm projecting geometry. The, usually the first thing I do when I'm adding features to, um, uh, to a part is I'm projecting the reference edges. I'm projecting origins. I'm projecting or, uh, origin axes so that I have, again, especially if your parts are symmetric. Um, these things are really important. Those are reference pieces of geometry that you're going to use to place uh, objects exactly on edges, um, not an eyeball. Don't over sketch something beyond the edge of, uh, of your part so that you get the cut all the way to the edge. No, no, project the geometry and make sure that you're actually snapping to those pieces of geometry. Now, what I've done there is uh, I've used a, uh, an option called construction geometry. Th there's a hundred different ways to center this point um, on, that, uh, on that rectangle, but honestly, the fastest way I've ever found is just use use um, use construction geometry. Now, the difference between construction geometry and normal geometry is that construction geometry is used for reference, and it won't be picked up uh, as a profile when you go to extrude. And you'll see this here in a second. Now, if you watch the previous example, I use the mirror command, and here I'm gonna I'm gonna mirror uh, to the top, and then uh, again I'm going to mirror uh, over to the other side um, this geometry. Now. Could I have cut this out as a feature and then mirrored the feature over? Yes, I could have. Um, there's no r one right way to do any of this stuff. And quite honestly, as long as as long as you ad adhere to a certain set of rules um, and and have a little little modeling discipline along the way, um, it's it, it's fine. It, it could have been a mirrored feature or a mirrored sketch in this example. There's there's um, I'd love to hear from anybody who strongly disagrees on that, but. So here I'm going to go ahead and, um, and and do my extrusion. I'm going to cut down to a surface, but offset. Okay, so I want to go down to that surface, but I want to offset a distance from that bottom, right? So you remember that I didn't 
I didn't do my uh, extrusion or my work plane at, at a specific distance because that wasn't the critical dimension here. I want what what I wanted was a critical dimension from the bottom. So where I started my sketch plane really didn't matter. Okay. So next I'm going to go ahead and place a hole on those points that I created in the middle of that rectangle. Uh, the hole command, this is just a simple hole. Um, I'm going to extrude through all six millimeters. We got our hole placed. Stick around for the next video and uh, we'll get this part wrapped up and start assembly modeling.